In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Welcome to the last, at least for a little while, of this particular type of 10.30 broadcast uh, Eucharist. Um, as next Sunday we're going to be returning to something more like our usual pattern of worship um, but it's wonderful that you've joined us this morning for this particular service. As we gather together to worship Almighty God, we, we sing our first hymn, I Heard the Voice of Jesus Say. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries of Christ's love, let us call to mind and confess our sins. Lord Jesus, you healed the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgave sinners. Christ, have mercy. 
Christ, have mercy. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, you give us yourself to heal us and bring us strength. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. <clears throat> Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory, Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and of your great mercy keep us in the same. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first scripture reading is read by Richard. A reading from St Paul's Epistle to the Ephesians, chapter 2, beginning to read at verse 11. So then, remember that at one time you Gentiles by birth called the uncircumcision by those who are called the circumcision, a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. In his flesh he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances so that he might create in himself one new humanity, in the place of the two, thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body, through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off, and peace to those who were near. For through him both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then, 
you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets <clears throat> with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. My sheep listen to my voice, says the Lord. I know them and they follow me. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. <clears throat> the apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, Jesus saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> <clears throat> Ludovic got his school report on Friday, his last report of, inf of the infants at school, which was, feels quite a momentous uh, occasion. I'm quite proud to say that it was really very good. His um, best score was in sport and music, where um, they, they don't give you grades A, B, C, D anymore. Well, go D... C, B, A, let's have it ascending. Um, they give you things like working towards, working at, or exceeding. That's it. Thank you, Caroline. Um, and uh, music and sport, he is exceeding where he's expected to be. Um, everything else he's working at, and he gets really good results for effort as well that he's putting in. So he's done really well. We haven't quite worked out how we should celebrate his achievements, though his birthday is coming up, and I'm sure we're going to do something fun together, so it'll probably all be wrapped up into one. What do you do when you've achieved something? How do you celebrate? You might pour yourself a glass of something nice, a glass of wine, or a beer, or a glass of nice whiskey. If you're uh, someone who likes gastronomy you might go out for a lovely meal somewhere to drake's in ripley or somewhere even uh swankier um you might be quite a private person and generally keep your achievements to yourself but nevertheless most of us 
will at least share news of our successes with at least some people who are dear to us. In the Gospel reading, we find the Apostles doing precisely that. They've returned from something like a missionary journey, one on which the Lord Jesus Christ had sent them, and the Apostles returned to the Lord to tell them all of the things that they had done. But in doing this, I think they were doing more than simply celebrating their successes or having a bit of a boast fest about how well it had all gone. They were placing their endeavours, all that they'd done, all that they had taught, they were placing those endeavours at the feet of their Messiah, the Lord of heaven and earth. Now the Lord sends us out into the world too to be witnesses to his love, And there are many ways in which we, like the apostles, share that message with others. We do so through caring for our families. That's a way in which we always forget God calls us to share love with the world. That's the first and foremost place where we are to show love by caring caring for and loving our families. We share God's love with the world through kindness, through service, through giving, through praying for others, through being willing to give a reason for the hope within us, through being prepared to be known as a follower of Jesus Christ. By doing all of these things and lots more, we can, in ordinary, everyday ways, share our faith. But after all of, we've, after all of that, after we've done all of those things, our work is only half done. After we have shared our faith the best we can, our work is only half done and will remain half done until, like the apostles, we return to the Lord who has sent us. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. The apostles returned to Jesus physically. We return to the Lord in prayer to hold before him all that we have done in his name and to ask him to bless it. We return to the Lord in worship when we gather to celebrate the sacred mysteries of Christ's body and blood in the Eucharist, when we place before him all that we are as human beings and say, this is who I am, please bless my labours. Perhaps there's something about this willingness to bring our achievements and lay them before the Lord, which actually helps our achievements become more fruitful. Perhaps it's not so much our eloquence, the eloquence with which we give a reason for our faith, our hope and our love, that attracts people to Christ, as it is the genuineness of that faith and hope and love which people can see in our lives. And I can think of no better way to deepen the genuineness of our faith in Christ than to regularly bring ourselves, all our efforts, our successes, our failures, along with all of the things which make us anxious and are on our mind and which trouble us, and lay them at his merciful and gentle feet. We can hide nothing from the one before whom all things are seen. Any pretense we might have in front of other people quickly falls away in his presence. And so it is in prayer that we become more genuinely ourselves. When the apostles came back to the Lord, returned to the Lord, and presented all they'd done to him, Christ said these words, Come away. Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. Perhaps we should hear those words of our Lord that he spoke to the apostles and hear them as words spoken to us too. The next few months in the life of our church are going to be hard work for a number of us as we try gently, falteringly, to re-establish the things which have fallen by the wayside over the last 18 months. We'll place ourselves under tremendous pressure I'm sure, to get things up and running. And we also feel that pressure from the wider church. Only recently, there was a Church of of England report suggesting 
that what we really need is 10,000 new lay-led churches, churches led by lay people, meeting in people's sitting rooms, working 10 to the dozen to turn around the decline in the Church of England. Work harder, do more, plan more, think bigger, be more strategic. That way we'll succeed. When we hear those words from our own hearts and from other people, we should listen very carefully to Jesus' words. Come, rest a while. The church does not grow through burnt-out disciples. It becomes fruitful through human beings made fully alive by resting in Christ's love. St. Augustine of Hippo said, Thou hast made us for thyself, O Lord, and our hearts are restless until they find their rest in thee. It's not through my relentless striving that my life becomes fruitful. It is through resting in Christ. When we learn to place our lives, our efforts, our failures our insecurities in Christ's hands, when we learn to rest in him, we begin to realize that the world and the church and everything else that we can possibly think of are his. People will come to fullness of life not because we or I have worked ever so hard, but because they've come to know and love and rest in the Lord Jesus Christ, the source of all goodness and beauty, and truth. And so when Jesus and the apostles had found a place to rest and realized that they'd been followed by a crowd, Jesus doesn't turn to his disciples and say, no rest for the wicked, come on chaps, back to work we go. doesn't say that. No. Jesus saw a great crowd and he had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. Christ has compassion on the crowd, and so gives to the crowd himself. He approaches them as their shepherd. He teaches them. He leads them to green pastures. I sometimes find myself looking at the world or looking at these parishes or looking at our congregations, looking at all the many and various needs that people have and finding myself thinking, they need more of me. They need more of me preaching. They need more of me taking services. They need more of me planning or leading or visiting or doing any number of things. They need more of me. Perhaps we all feel the same sometimes. But it takes wisdom and humility and Christ-like compassion to say, they don't. They don't need more of me. They don't need more of us. They need more of Christ. And I will only say that, I will only be that sort of person that can say they need more of Christ if I know that deep in my heart, if I know that it is true of me, that Christ is the only one who has and whoever can give me rest, who can make me lie down in green pastures and lead me by still waters and restore my soul. Jesus calls me, calls us all, to be compassionate like him. But that compassion will be shown, of course, in many practical ways, but it will be shown first and foremost in letting other human beings find Jesus Christ. May we never forget that the greatest compassion we can ever show another human being is to lead them to the one in whom true joy and hope can be found, to lead them through our lives, to lead them through being at peace ourselves, to lead them to Jesus Christ, the true and compassionate shepherd. Amen.
Let us declare our faith in Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, <clears throat> eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our prayers of intercession are led by Richard. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, as you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, hear us as we pray in faith. Lord, help us to rest a while in the cooling shade of your presence. Slow down our restless hearts and fill us with gentle compassion for all your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Strengthen Andrew and Joe, our bishops, Paul, our archdeacon, Barnaby, Helen, Douglas and Sue, our ministers, and all your church in the service of Christ that those who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. In particular this week, we pray for the work of Messy Church as it meets again in person for the first time in many months, and for all the work of those who lead and organise our readings and intercessions, especially Rosie. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our, prayer. Hear our prayer. Lord of Lords and King of Kings, we ask you to guide and strengthen all statesmen, leaders and rulers, especially Elizabeth, our Queen. Grant them wisdom, grant them resolution and grant them great faith. In particular, we pray for all those who have to make tough decisions as we start to come out of lockdown. We pray for peace on your troubled earth in all places where there is conflict, particularly in the Middle East and South Africa. We pray also for all those affected by the flooding and landslides in Belgium, Germany and the Netherlands. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Lord, we pray for our own community, the places where we work, and for our homes and those whom we love. Make us mindful that all our lives depend on the work of others, and help us to live thankfully and in unity as members of one human family. Especially as we start to regain our freedoms as lockdown is lifted, we pray that we may use those freedoms sensibly and compassionately. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Give courage, Lord, to all who are ill and all who are afraid for their future. 
Knowing that you are our strength and salvation, we commend to your loving care all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. In your goodness and mercy, grant them health in body, soundness in mind and peace in spirit. Especially we pray for all those for whom the lifting of lockdown restrictions for others means challenges, dangers and further restrictions. In our own community, we pray for Ronald and Hilary McKinnon, Delia and Richard Baker, Jean Fawley, Doreen Rawlings, Pamela Backhouse, Victoria Voller, Richard Perkins, and in a moment of silence, all others known to us. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Hear us as we remember those who have died in the faith of Christ. In particular, we remember Linda Ratniks, Graham Craddock, Valerie Rowley, and Rosemary Margaret Hodges, who have died recently. And Sir Desmond Rice, John Porter, Ian Atkinson, Gaynor Brown, Rory Edwards and Andrew Walker, whose anniversaries fall around this time. In a moment of silence, we remember all those others known to us. According to your promises, grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole of creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept Set these prayers, prayers for, for the, the sake, sake of, of your Son, Son our, our Saviour, Saviour Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread which we offer you, fruit of the earth and the work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. history of this water and wine when we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in your humanity. Blessed are you Lord God of all creation for through your goodness we have received the wine which we offer you, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever.
Lord, bring us closer to salvation through the gifts which we bring in your honour. Accept the perfect sacrifice you have given us and bless it, bless it, as you blessed the gifts of your servant Abel. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, from sunrise to sunset this day is holy, for Christ has risen from the tomb and has scattered the darkness of death with light that will not fade. This day the risen Lord walks with your gathered people, unfolds for us your word, and makes himself known in the breaking of the bread. And though the night will overtake this day, you summon us to live in endless light, the never-ceasing Sabbath of the Lord. And so with choirs of angels, and with all the heavenly host, we proclaim your glory, and join their unending song of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, 
St. Peter, St. Paul, St. Thomas of Canterbury, the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Formed by divine teaching and at our Saviour's command, with boldness we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. O Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace. <clears throat> behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Jesus Christ is present wherever we are when we open our hearts to receive him. As you look upon the gifts of God upon this altar, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist, take a moment perhaps to receive Christ into your hearts, to pray that you earnestly desire to receive him as your Lord and Saviour. And there is a prayer of spiritual communion in your order of service to help you do this. God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Ludovic, may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Merciful Father, may these sacred mysteries give us new purpose and bring us to new life in you. We ask this in the name of Jesus, the Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us <clears throat> today for this last one of these um, 10.30 broadcast Eucharist with just me and my family present. Um, thank you for sticking with this for such a long time. Please do um, watch out for news about how precisely some of the arrangements for returning to our ordinary pattern of worship uh, next Sunday. Um, returning to the ordinary pattern of worship will mean that there is an 8 o'clock Eucharist, an 8 o'clock Book of Common Prayer Eucharist here in West Clandon, a 9.15 Eucharist in East Clandon, and a 10.30 Eucharist back here in West Clandon. Thank you for all who've contributed to our Eucharist today, to Richard for the reading and the prayers, to Tessa and Sebastian for the beautiful music, and to all who've contributed to these online services for the last 19 months or so, uh, since, well, longer really. Um, it's, been a, it's been a long haul, and you've all done brilliantly, and I'm incredibly grateful to you all for bringing so much to our worship together. So thank you. We conclude our service now with our final hymn, Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing, my great Redeemer's praise. <clears throat> should have mentioned also in the notice is Messy Church, which is coming this Saturday. Um, it's really important that we know, if you'd love, you are very welcome to come, first of all, please do come, but it's really important that we um, know that you're coming. So please, um, if you would like to come to Messy Church, could you please get in touch with Tessa? Um, that is by emailing tessa at clandon-churches.org. So please do let us know. We bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. The Lord be with you. And also with you. 
The peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.